Hello again. This is um, my second attempt to um, investigate in the into the Brexit withdrawal vote. Um, I did. The, I think it was fifteenth uh, of February. Uh, sorry, fifteenth of January, and the vote was already known that it was going to be voted down. But uh, this Tuesday, uh, this evening at seven o'clock, we have uh, another um, proposed uh, Brexit withdrawal vote. And last time we looked at the uh, chart for the um, vote itself, which is theoretically at seven o'clock. And I ended that, um, that uh, uh, chart and this kind of, uh, this, this recording as a kind of experiment to see if astrology could have anything to say about it. Um, if you remember the last one, there was a sun, which was the rule of the ascendant, and it was going up to square Uranus, and the moon emphasized Saturn, which was the ruler of the seventh house, which suggested a no vote. And anyway, it was going to be voted down, most of the pundits said. So it wasn't so much a prediction chart as a, a look into uh, astrology of events as, as an experiment. And you may recall also that what we do, particularly using horary uh, methods, horary astrology methods, is looking for signification, which has been the major theme of um, these videos, because I think the theme of signification, of looking at what planets signify, to see if the planet has, if the, see if a horoscope has radicality or a realness to it, that you can assure yourself that the horoscope is revealing something through its symbolism. And when it does that, well, you, the planet, the planets or particular positions become significant in the mind of the astrologer because the astrological symbolism is showing or revealing a particular aspect of a person's psychology or the event or the person or a situation. This is what we do with all types of astrology. We assume that the horoscope has significance. We look at the, uh, through the rules and regulations of, of, of astrological logic and through the symbolism, we see it come to life. And so I'm going to now have a look at a, a, a chart for tonight's vote. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the, the seventh house is the nose and the eyes for the government's um for the government's vote so i'm going to try and share a chart now and have a look at this uh chart with you uh if we can get it through here well i hope they see this chart now and let me just get myself there and this is the chart of the um the vote tonight and let's have a look at some of the significances. And I must say, in reviewing this chart before I was going to do this recording, I, um, th there are contrary indications. In other words, I think the thing is very, very finely balanced. Because when we look at the significators of the ruler of the seventh, which would be Venus, and the ruler of the seventh, which would be the nose, the eyes are the first, the no's lobby are going to be the, or against, are going to be the seventh. We see some very interesting things uh, because both sides have uh, uh, beneficial aspects. They have support. They're both entrenched in their positions. And uh, although classically Venus here, when we add up all the point system about, about its benefits of the sign in the house and, its, uh, 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 and so on, it comes out to a plus, a plus point. Well, when we look at Mars, according to the uh, solar fire, the Mars has a minus 10 points. So in other words, it doesn't have a, a lot of dignity in its position. Uh, and by dignity, we mean a lot of standing, a lot of um, uh, strong capacities for Mars to act like Mars, which is very vigorous. Now, um, but when we look at Venus, too, we'll, we'll find some other things which I'm not so sure of. So each one is a finely balanced significator. But do they signify? First of all, we have to ask, do they signify the particular things that we're, talk we're looking at in the event of the withdrawal vote? Well, as usual, we would look to the moon. 
uh, that signifies the um, motion or the movement in the matter, and uh, it brings uh, it, it. It somehow brings things into a body of significance. The moon is all important. It rules the tenth house, so there's a, a kind of it suggests itself as important as a judger of events, and we can see it's in the sign of debate uh, in um, uh, Gem in Gemini. It's in the ninth house, so we're. Uh, talking perhaps about uh, you know the future relationship with uh, uh, what you might call a foreign uh, country or foreign countries indicated by the mutable signs two or more and you see that it's intercepted in the ninth so this moon uh, indicates a general symbolism there of discussion of debate of to and fro that's going to go on all day and as I say it's about uh, really who makes the laws of our own country or do we want to uh, push into this this um, more super state this supranational body uh, of the European Commission, the Council of Ministers and the European Parliament. Now I'm going to go into those three things in a different chart on the EU, which I might do today if I have the energy or, or, or I'll do sometime this week because Uranus recently, you can see here, has moved into Taurus and it will be moving into very significant uh, positions in the European chart itself of the Maastricht Treaty uh, 1st of November 1993. But let me restrict this. So we see this we see this moon here nicely placed in the uh, ninth house moving up it's the most elevated planet it is the dispositor of the uh, uh, north node here which is another and a positive indication. So the moon is very powerful powerful in this chart it's suggesting the overall placement uh, uh, suggesting the overall um, um, uh, event itself and the situation as I say of debate and parleying of course P is, is very similar to Parliament it's a, uh, really a house of crows I think it's a Parliament of crows anyway perhaps that's what they really are underneath uh, whoever's in the pecking order uh, ha however makes all the difference sorry small pun there okay um, so let's have a look then at, at whether the, the ruler of the ascendant here is signifying the government's um, uh, motion uh, to accept Theresa May's deal uh, in its supposedly amended form. And we'll come back to that word supposedly in, in a minute. Well, if you look here, uh, Libra on the ascendant, sign of indecision, uh, balancing, weighing up, um, a, a kind of uh, a, a sign which seeks to get the, the best of both worlds, but sometimes doesn't get uh, the best of any. Its, it's, it's principle is to unite or to, to balance two halves of something in order to bring a, a, about a kind of harmonious relationship, that it's principle. And it may be continually doing this since life is in a state of flux. Very difficult for the sun actually to be in the sign of Libra. It's, uh, it's in the sign of its um, detriment, I believe. Uh, sometimes I get those two confused. Uh, um, uh, but nevertheless, it, um, you, you know, detriment of fall. I think fall is opposite the exaltation. But it's in detriment there because the sun is the principle of life itself. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a sense of radiating out a uniqueness of the independent being who, of which it is attached to, uh, that's, that single centre of life. Uh, but Libra has a, has a duty to operate within a relationship. It's one half of the earth to the other. This is the sunset, whereas Aries is the, the rising dawn. So D D Libra has that uh, principle, as I say, to operate between balance, and it tries to find the medium line, the line of connection. And we can see, because um, Theresa May is a son in Libra, we can see this describes her rather well. And uh, Venus is over here, the Venus is over here in Aquarius, which it also, if you believe the horoscope uh, that's, that's online, uh, Theresa May has an Aquarius um, MC. 
This is also the sign of an international community or a larger body to which we belong. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a particular group, an astrology group or a group of psychotherapists or whatever it is. It's a group of solidarity, of a, of a unified body to which somebody belongs and we become subservient to the principle, usually to do with ideologies, not necessarily to do with religions so much as a kind of uh, a, a, philis a philosophical political ideology or perhaps an, an affiliation to a common bond of an idea that's what the whole heart of Aquarius is about really um, looking for looking to um, combine like in that air sign way it seeks to it seeks to connect things together so we see this as the European community or, um, or uh, Theresa May's um, uh, suggestion um, uh, to do with the withdrawal agreement. So I believe that this shows her quite well, or at least the government's uh, forward motion, as it were. And let's have a look at its position. Um, it has a, a score of plus two, which isn't particularly great on the dignity to ability scale, but we see it is an exact sex star here to the part of fortune, which is always a, 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 a fortunate position. The part of fortune adds something like um, uh, quite a few points to a planet in honorary astrology. It brings it a fortune. It, it adds something beneficial to the planet, especially if it's um, conjunct, sextile or trine is okay. Um, now, apart from that, it doesn't have any particularly other good aspects. And um, uh, and so to, to, to no other bodies except to a square of Mars, which brings it into a conflict. One wants to go one way, the other wants to go another. Now Mars, as you can see, is the opposite sign. It rules the no lobby. So we can very clearly see a square, a tension between those that um, if you like seek an independent being Mars in Taurus has a particularly uh, strong emphasis on on the individual um, it, it seeks security it wants things to remain the same it can be b very belligerent ultimately extremely reliable it perseveres they sign the Taurus perseveres through a problem in, in in a very steady rock fast manner it has a it has a base upon which it can stand which says this is this is the security the, 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 whether it's money in the bank or an idea or an ideology or just a, a way of being it tends to say no and then looks to see what what's possible to change so it doesn't ruin the security of it so we have this although both are uh, fixed signs and so this fixed ideology tends to um, want, want to override or overrule all the others because it says why not belong to this group uh, the group is a is a greater um, the herd instinct if you like is uh, to belong to that would be much more secure but Taurus says no I'd rather look after my own money I'd rather uh, keep what is mine as it is because there's a danger there's a danger in change of ruining a structure Taurian uh, Saturnian structure uh, and you see him uh, um, uh, Mars is trying to Saturn. Is this the 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 if if we change the structure, then then I'll have to build up another secure base. It's like battering something down. Taurus has a terrible trouble with, with changing things um, because it just feels insecure. Whether that's relationship or whether that's um, uh, to do with getting rid of the uh, the things that they have. Um, uh, essentially it is the planet of uh, the sign of uh, the certainty looking for that upon which one can depend so what you can depend upon is the normal house of commons rules that have been supported this country for um, uh, a number of hundred hundreds of years and so on and so we have a fundamental square between them now, if we wanted to see which one was, quotes, better, which one is stronger, then we have a problem because both have some sense of um, uh, value here. 
Venus is sextile to this. It has a positive feature of plus two. And you can see here that the moon will eventually, in that sign of Gemini, trine that Venus. So the future, it, the future looks reasonably good for Venus in, in this sense, that something positive is going to come out of the government's position. But um, and let's have a look at the other one. Saturn, uh, uh, Mars here in the eighth house, not particularly strong, uh, but nevertheless pretty ruthless, pretty dynamic, um, certain in its attitude, and we see a very powerful trine to Saturn in um, Capricorn down here in the fourth house. The fourth house here might mean uh, a, a, a staying where one is, um, a, a sense of the commonness, common feature of the land and the nationality. The fourth house can represent that upon which we stand. It represents the, the, the earth itself. Um, and I, I believe this perhaps stands for a strong and solid national identity and a sense of that. Remember, the um, uh, UK is a Capricorn country, according to the 1066 chart, and Mercury sits at 16, 17 degrees Capricorn right on this sat now. So there's a very powerful decision being made in the country. So this is a very powerful and stronger aspect, I believe, than this Venus um, uh, here. But it has no particular future relationship and has a sextile here. You know, when it, when, when it moves on, it goes into that Saturn, but then it also goes into a trine of Pluto. This, there's a real stubbornness with this, and I feel that this may actually take um, take some strength from that Saturn to be rooted in its own uh, national identity, if you like. Uh, Jordan Peterson, I've talked to in other videos, but Jordan Peterson has this, who bases his arguments, Aries, on the facts. He's uh, deeply based in, in science and so on, but he also has a, a fluidity with so many other facts that he just, it's not upon one set of facts that he depends. Um, Anyway, I'll refer you to other videos on Mars in Taurus. But it's sextile to Neptune too. There's some weaknesses in this position. There might be a, a little bit of flooding out of um, the, the, the solidness of it. And this sextile here, you see, to so this, this, this Neptune is, is, is kind of bubbling away um, and seeping through. We don't qu quite know which way it's going to go. Um, I've often uh, linked this Neptune to the suffusion of individual member states, individual countries, into this conglomerate mass. Whether it's a good thing or bad thing, I will leave to, leave to another time to discuss. So there is some fluidity uh, on, on both sides here, um, some weak semi-sextile as opposed to Venus, but I, I like the fact that this moon is moving up, but it's from an intercepted sign. The other things that I would like to say is that, uh, of course, uh, Theresa May recently went over to Europe to talk with uh, Mr. Juncker, and we can see that it's retrograde. This is a general, um, indication in general that, that, that when things are discussed like that, especially in Pisces, there's been a little bit of fudge. There's been a, a presentation um, to say, oh, there, there are legally binding agreements. But I, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what uh, Jeffrey Cox, the Attorney General, has to say about this agreement. I just feel there's been a fudge. Mercury, the expositor of the moon, is not very pleasant here. It's confused, it's um, uncertain, uh, it's, it's in its combust, moving back towards the sun. I wonder whether these debates and these um, discussions and whatever has been agreed is, is really too duplicitous. It, it's not really worth the paper it's written on or the words that are said. And when I saw them sitting together, they were on the news. There was Juncker on the right, looked as if he'd had a bit too much uh, to drink as he was wandering back. Um, not that I hold that against him, but he seems to be uh, uh, s s somehow in his own world sometimes. And But, but Teresa looked very, very stony-faced. She looked depressed. She looked despondent, and although she delivered the speech as usual, with her Virgo inaccuracy, uh, Moon in Virgo, 
and there wasn't wavering in the voice. Her face didn't look very good. In other words, I think she knows that she's tried her very best to sell something here, to say the right words. But the, 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 when I looked at it itself, it, it's so fudgy. You have to get agreement from the 26 other members of, of, of the European Union to go ahead. And, and we must know that the European Union is um, mired in this kind of, um, well, we might, it, it's a kind of fudge and compromise, which we'll deal when it, when, when it comes to it. And so for the final judgment here, this is a very tricky one because Venus is in a reasonable position and something good will come of it. But I find that the, uh, any conversation held under a Mercury retrograde, particularly a combust Mercury, conjunction of the Sun here and, and, and in Pisces, which, um, which is uncertain in itself. Nothing, it, you know, it holds water, it, but, but there's, a, there's a leak in here somewhere, you see? And uh, th this uh, moon will eventually go on to square Neptune, square Sun, and, and square Mercury. So after it hits this Venus, it takes it and then it moves it on to these squares. And so I'm uncomfortable with this. I feel because there's a strong uh, two degree, that's 18, yes, about a one degree aspect between these two, that this is the stronger. Although I think the vote is going to be very thin and uh, uh, narrow. Something is, 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 I think a few people are going to, um, uh, I think there's going to be more votes than there were time, which isn't very uh, uh, difficult to do because it was voted out. But it, as I say, it does depend on the parliament, the parley going on today, the debates, the backroom deals that we can see this this Mercury uh, uh, dealing with. People have been um, promised, all kinds of MPs have been promised a million or billion for this and, and so on. There's uh, lots of backroom deals going on. But my judgment here, in, in general, and on the whole, is I feel that this belligerent Mars-Saturn will win through, although I must say, at the end of this um, uh, presentation, uh, that it could be my own bias reading into which one I prefer. But nevertheless, that is my judgment, and uh, we all wait to see it at the end of the day. Cheerio.